Hello and welcome to the channel and my review of Chaos Space Marines which is available from pre-order from Games Workshop from today. So as ever thank you to Games Workshop for sending this through to me so I can give you guys an impression about what I find inside. Starting from the top, overall impression is good, it's quite strong, there's lots of layers, lots of complexity, it's 9th edition and Chaos Space Marines have an extra wound and Chosen have an extra extra wound, they have three wounds, they're hench. It's like waiting for a bus, You're waiting for one to turn up and then two come along when you least expect it. So Chosen, they're in the elite slot, they cost 25 points each, 25 points for three wound space marines with a base four attack because they all come with a cursed weapons which are basically power swords at strength five minus three, one damage. So I don't play care of space marines but uh, if there was an option in the space marine book for 25 points to get three wound space marines with four attacks at AP minus three at strength five, I'd definitely get them. Seems like a bargain to me. Along with the extra wounds you get on the legionaries and the extra two wounds you get on chosen and the extra wounds you get on chaos space Mar uh, terminators, along with all the extra wounds, there's extra attacks. Basically chaos beans, chaos space marines don't have shock assault. Um, they have all their additional attacks just rolled into their data sheet. They're a bit like gray knights. But it gets better. For 20 points, you can give that unit a Balefire Tome and turn your unit of troops into Psychers. There is another troops unit out in 40k world where troops can become Psychers and they're Grey Knights. They cost 22 points a model. But for a unit of 10 Legionaries, this will cost you 20 points a model. Of course, Grey Knights get Storm Bolters and Power Weapons, so Legionaries are a bit cheaper. That works out about right. So you'll want to upgrade your Legionaries with better weapons and, and Power Weapons and things. But essentially, you can get the Chaos version of Grey Knights running around all over the place. You can have Legionary Psyker squads, so it won't feel like your troop selection, your Chaos Space Marines, are attacks on your army. You won't feel like, well, I'll just fill up my army with Cultists instead. Because Legionaries... They can cast psychic powers. That's that's a thing now. So straight off the back, I like that. There's options for legionaries, options in your troop slot straight away. Prescience is one of the standard abilities that legionaries can unlock. Legionaries, if you do make them psychers, they don't have access to all of the dark hereticus discipline. They either get infernal gate, prescience, or diabolic strength. But prescience is good, plus one to hit. But even that, just running around and smiting with them and smiting with them, that's still good. And you can upgrade your legionaries with marks of chaos. You can upgrade any core unit with a mark of chaos. Now you always always could give marks of chaos, but now they actually do something. They cost 15 points a mark to upgrade a unit. So if you have a group of legionaries with a baleful tome that have been upgraded to mark of zinch, that will cost you 215 points. And certain marks unlock certain psychic powers so uh, legionaries with the mark of zinch unlock schemes of fate and uh, that's a psychic power that can give a um a zinch unit within 18 inches of the psyker a four up invulnerable save um if you gave them the mark of nurgle for 15 points you get putrid miasma which is minus one to hit basically miasma of pestilence from the nurgle book and delightful agonies for the slanish stuff which is a five up feel no pain what I'm trying to say is <laughs> you can upgrade troops now in this book to actually be quite good. Give them psychic powers and then you can unlock further psychic powers by giving them marks. You could have one unit of troops running around with prescience and that will be plus one to hit. Get throwing it out to 18 inches and then you could have one unit running around with schemes of fate, which is um, a four up invulnerable save, throwing it out. To 18 inches you don't have two legionaries two useless taxes there sitting in the backfield you do have two units sitting in the backfield by the way but they're throwing out psychic powers 18 inches they're sitting in the backfield behind a wall somewhere out of line of sight camping on an objective getting ready to jump on anything if anything comes closer the troops in this are quite good in that regard um there's when you're assembling an army it's the same as the other armies now like you can only take a demon prince or a lord you can't take any more cultist units than you have legionary units so they've really trimmed down the cultist horde rush and multiple demon prince rushes builds from this book here they've brought it into line 
with the other books, which is nice. Um, and it also feels more like a Chaos Space Marine book. You'll be building, you'll be bringing a Demon Prince, because they're really good now. You'll be bringing a Lord, and you'll be bringing a couple of units of Legionaries. I think Demon Princes have pretty much been leaked everywhere over the internet, but they're better, they smash harder, they have a 4-up invulnerable save against ranged attacks, and a 5-up invulnerable save in close combat. I like the 4-up invulnerable save against ranged attacks. That's a nice little touch, a nice little distinction there. So starting off with your Demon Prince, your Legionaries, probably a unit of um, Chosen. You're going to want to add Marks of Chaos to various units here because Marks do things now. And Marks have a 1 and 2 section. Uh, for example, the Mark of Corn, they add 1 to the Strength characteristics when they charge. If you pay 15 points for a unit, plus 1 Strength when they go charging in, great. But if they also have an Icon in that unit, then they improve the AP characteristics of 1 when they have a melee attack, when they go punching. Mark of Zinch, once per turn, when the first saving throw has failed, they reduce the damage characteristics of that first attack by zero. And if it has an icon, each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack, improve the armor penetration characteristic of that attack by one. So plus one AP when they shoot. Mark of Corn, plus one AP when they punch. But you need icons. And the units that get icons are legionaries, chosen and possessed. Not Chaos Terminators, which is a bit odd, because they could bring icons in the previous edition. But yeah, uh, Chaos Icons, five points in those units, an absolute steal. Basically, <laughs> if you're spending the 15 points to upgrade your Legionaries, your Chosen, or your Possessed, then spend 20 points. Add another five points in there, throw in an Icon, and get both of those levels of benefits. And I like that. I like the option that you can just run around with unmarked units if you want to, keeping them cheap or tooling them up for a specific job. And I like the idea that you can uh, give them marks and icons and load them up and, and make them a bit more expensive and tool them up for an even more specific job. Options that allow you to load out these units differently or tweak these units differently so that they do different things in a codex, particularly a codex called Codex Chaos Space Marines is absolutely essential because this codex, you're supposed to be able to build some legionaries who are corn berserkers or who are night lords if you want to. But you're also supposed to build some chosen or possessed or legionaries who lean much further to the Slanesh or Zinch way of war. And this book gives you the options to do those things for your core units at a base level. And I like that. Possessed don't have core, which is annoying, but it's probably better for the rest of us that they don't because at 28 points a model for a toughness 5, 3 wound, 5 attack monstrosity, it's they're, they're good. With no upgrades, a unit of 10 possessed will be 280 points. What do you get for your 280 points? Well, toughness 5, 3 wounds with a 3 up save, as we mentioned. They also have a 5 up in vulnerable save. <laughs> and at 5 attacks each, That'll be a unit of 10 of these guys will be 50 attacks at strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. Upgrade them with a mark of chaos, give them a chaos icon. We're going to see a lot of possessed running around all over the place. They are beefcakes with lots of wounds, a built-in invulnerable save and lots of attacks for 28 points a model. Talking about attacks, this book as a whole, leans towards close combat. There's lots of attacks, lots of ways to buff attacks, re-rolls to hit, re-rolls to wound, things like that. It leans that way, in the same way that the Grey Knight uh, Codex actually leans towards close combat attacks, because that whole army has power weapons. In this book, a lot of its strengths lies in going forward and punching stuff. It doesn't mean that you can't build a shooty uh, list. You can build a shooty list. Um, but perhaps not as shooty as the standard Space Marines. There are standard Space Marine builds that can put lay down an awful lot of firepower, particularly with Dreadnoughts, particularly with Iron Hands, things like that. Um, this book perhaps can't lay down as much firepower as a standard Space Marine book. If you put them side by side and try to build the most shooty Chaos Space Marine book and the most shooty Space Marine book, you'd probably outshoot them with Space Marines. But... Um, I'm not saying the Chaos Space Marine book can't do that, but its strengths definitely lean towards running forward and punching stuff. Um, there are new cultists in here. While we're dabbling in the shallow end of the gene pool with all the basic stuff, cultists are five points. The new cultists are six points. They're cultists. They're a bit more resilient 
troops. You can put torments in there, and the torments have extra wounds. They're like mutated chaos spawn cultists. They're like a mixed blob squad. There's cultists in this book. There's there's smite screens in this book. Do you want to pay for the cheap five point standard cultist mob smite screen, or do you want to pay for the more fearless with the bit of a resilient accursed cultist smite screen? Up to you. Depends how many points you've got left, or which models you think are the coolest. I mean, they're not going to be doing anything other than dying and sitting on objectives. Chaos Terminators have core. You can buy them a mark if you want to. But as mentioned, you can't give them an icon or make them psychers. But at 33 points a model, they're absolutely cheap as chips. One of the things I do like about this book as well is um, in the Chaos Terminator squad, for example, they come with cultic combi bolters and accursed weapons. And each time the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack with this weapon. The accursed weapons are the same ones that the Chosen have, these Strength 5, Minus 3, 1 damage weapons. What they're saying is, it doesn't matter how you load out your Chosen or your Chaos Terminators, it doesn't matter whether you put claws, axes, swords, whatever you've put on there, all that crap is just accursed weapons. If you've got a pair of claws on your Chaos Terminator model, then he's got five attacks. If you've got a Combi Bolter and an accursed weapon, an axe or a sword or whatever, then they've got four attacks. They've built some simplicity into the data sheets. You can load up the models however you want to load them up and make them look as cool as you might. You want to. They've built some simplicity. They've built some basic simplicity into the data sheet, so you can load up the models however you want them to look. Make them look as cool as you want them to look, and basically in close combat they're doing the same thing, and that is that's nice. Is a little thing at the bottom of the Chaos Terminator squad though, which says um, for every five models in this unit, up to three models can have their accursed weapon replaced with a power fist. <laughs> so you could drop in a unit of five and three of them have power fists, or a unit of ten and six of them have power fists. Nice little touch, but yeah, no icons or psychers coming out of the Chaos Terminator squad. So at a base level, Many of the units that you're going to just chuck in there at the start, the Space Marines, the things like, they're all good. The Chaos Space Marines, they're all good. Nice little thing. Um, but now we have to talk about a little bit of the bad, uh, a little bit, because there's not a lot of bad in this book. But there's a couple of things that will also stand out when you first put your nose in it. Now, there are Noise Marines in this book, which are in the Elite slot, and you can choose to put them in the Troop slot. There used to be Noise Marines, Corn Berserkers, Rubik Marines and Plague Marines in this book, in the Chaos Space Marine book. Uh, one represented from each of the Chaos uh, Gods, your Plague Marines, your Thousand Suns, your Corn Berserkers, that sort of thing. There used to be one from every God in here in the Elite slot that you could then move to the Troop slot. But now they only have Noise Marines, which you can move to the Troop slot. It does say that you can bring Corn Berserkers, Rubik Marines or Plague Marines from that book, from the other book, so um, you can include a unit of Plague Marines units in Chaos Space Marines Detachment using the data sheet and points valued values found in Codex Death Guard, for example. So you can bring Plague Marines across from the Death Guard, you can bring uh, Rubik Marines across from the Thousand Suns, you can bring Corn Berserkers across from the World Eaters Codex, but you lose the detachment benefits, the Legion benefits from that Codex. And then when you port them across into the Chaos Space Marine book, they count as elites. This means a couple of things. If you want to include Plague Marines or Thousand Suns in the Chaos Space Marine book, and you don't have those other books, <laughs> you're going to need to get a hold of those data sheets somehow and then slot them in here as elites. Um, you don't get the benefits from their core, core books and you don't get the Legion benefits from the Chaos Space Marine book either. Uh, the other thing you need to note is... As we haven't got a Codex World Eaters at the time that this video is going out, you can't really build a Corn Berserker attachment detachment right now. There are quite a few armies out there, hell I know about four of them, where people use the Codex Chaos Space Marine books to build World Eaters armies, Corn Berserker armies. Now Chaos World Eaters is in here, the Legion World Eaters is in, in here, but you can't bring Corn Berserkers as troops right now, um, which kind of sucks, but it doesn't really suck because anyone who has got world eaters and who loves corn berserkers are going to get a whole new codex very soon with loads of new stuff in it. 
Um, there are a couple of other units missing from this book. Uh, mutilators, the obliterator versions, the close combat version of obliterators, they're not in here. The greater possessed is not in here either. I've got a friend, Alex SEO, he literally over the last year built up a corn berserker army using the old Chaos Space Marine book. And in his army, he's got six mutilators. I know, it's crazy. He deep strikes them in and then goes charging in. And if they fail the charge, they fail the charge. They only move four. If they fail the charge, they fail the charge. But they're big, chunky boys and they can take it. He's got two units of mutilators that he deep strikes in. And he also runs the list with two greater possessed. And uh, he can't use that list right now. <laughs> But he is very excited for the World Eaters Codex, and hopefully that will be coming hot on the heels of this. Games Workshop don't normally dump models without telling the community. I mean, even the old, old, old models that you can no longer get from Games Workshop are available in the Legends data slates. So I can't imagine they're getting rid of um, the Greater Possessed. I mean, that's only been out a couple of years. And mutilators, uh, the mute, the obliterators got an upgrade into their new plastic kit. If I was a betting man, I would say the greater possessed and the mutilators are coming in the Chaos World Eaters book. I think so, probably. If I was a betting man, I'd say there's red butchers coming in that book as well, and probably a new vehicle or two. I mean, when the Thousand Sun book dropped, there was new vehicles for Thousand Suns, wasn't there? Yeah, mutilith vortex beasts and stuff like that, and then there was new vehicles for death guard like the drones and the tanks so world eaters are going to get their fair share but there's no denying it from a data slate and unit selection point of view this book is smaller than it was before there's less choices there having said that that's perfectly counterbalanced by all the other options on the front end of the book what they've loaded into the front end um, there's lots of options and lots of different play styles because all nine legions are very thoroughly represented here. And I said eight, I just counted them. There's nine. There's Black Legion. There's Word Bearers. There is Night Lords. Hang about. There is Iron Warriors. There is Alpha Legion. There is Emperor's Children. There is the Red Corsairs. And I think that's it. Oh no, and there's Creations of Bile as well. And with every Legion, when you get to the start of this book, um, you the first thing you'll hit is Black Legion. And it'll tell you, hey, this is the Black Legion, this is what they do. And basically, the Black Legion hit better now. If they're targeting the closest unit, they get plus one to hit. So Black Legion are going to be hitting on twos, so long as they're shooting at the closest thing. And whenever they make a charge, Black Legion plus one to hit. Hitting on twos. And then it gives you your own secondary objection, objective for Black Legion, your own warlord traits, your own stratagems, and your own relics. For Black Legion and there are eight stratagems and eight relics for the Black Legion and then you go to the word bearers page and the word bearers have a page of warlord traits a page of stratagems and a page of relics and it does this again and again and again for every legion and then after that you've got four pages of generic re relics uh, four pages of generic stratagems three pages of generic relics so Basically pick a legion, gain specific warlord traits, relics and stratagems for that legion and also gain all the relics, warlord traits and stratagems from the generic part of the book. This means that Codex Chaos Space Marines has by far the highest number of stratagems, relics and warlord traits available from any Codex in 40k right now. So if you love your Chaos Space Marines and you play a specific legion such as Word Bearers or Creations of Baal, you're going to love this book because suddenly you've got a lot more options. Or if you play as Chaos Space Marines and you don't play as a specific legion, you just mix and match and play with what you want when you want. Sometimes you play Creations of Baal, sometimes you play Alpha Legion, sometimes you play this, sometimes you play that. Well, you've got almost a hundred stratagems to choose from. There's about 60 relics throughout the whole book, as well as all the other ways you can modify your units. Um, a note on the word bearers, by the way, is this broken? Each time a model with this trait makes a melee attack, if that model's unit made a charge move, was charged or performed a heroic intervention this turn, you can re-roll the attack's hit roll. So that's a legion specific thing for word bearers. So your whole army is re-rolling attacks, not re-rolling hit rolls of one, 
but re-rolling all attacks all the time, every time they charge. They also get a 5-up shrug to mortal wounds, but ignore that bit for now. Profane seal, re-rolling all hits on the charge. That's crazy good. Say you've got more mutilators, mauler fiends. Are they mauler fiends, the big stompy robots? Say you've got warp talons. Warp talons, they're in the fast attack slot. They've got jet packs, jump packs. They're the better version of raptors, the normal assault dudes. Like assault marines, but with a 5 up and vulnerable save and 5 attacks. Warp talons, 28 points. 280 points for a unit of 10. If you're word bearers, these 280 points are re-rolling all hits because that's what they do and then they charge. And they've got warp claws, so they're re-rolling all wounds and they'll have 51 attacks. At strength 4, minus 2, 1 damage. They've also got the demon kin keyword, so you can pop a few scraps on them. They also have warp flames, so whenever an enemy tries to fall back from a unit of warp talons, roll off, and if you win, the enemy can't fall back, and they're kept in that melee hell. But you're possessed. At their five attacks, they'll be re-rolling all hits. Your hell brutes, they'll be re-rolling all hits. Hell, Venom Crawlers have got six attacks now instead of four, and they've only got nine wounds, so they don't degrade, so they've always got six attacks now instead of losing it from four to three to two. And they hit on threes. Venom Crawlers hitting on threes with six attacks, re-rolling all hits. Venom Crawlers are good now, they're on nine wounds. They're also cheap, 105 points for essentially what is a very fast Dreadnought. Because it's about Dreadnought cost, it's about Dreadnought punchy power, and I say very fast Dreadnought because they move 12 now and they're in the fast attack slot, which I love. Because the heavy slot in this book is quite heavy, it's quite full. So putting the Venom Crawlers and moving them 12 and hitting them on 3s and putting them in the fast attack slot, is uh, they're going to be selling a few Venom Crawlers. I mean, 315 points for 3 Venom Crawlers in your fast attack slot, just charging forward, 5 up and vulnerable save, hitting on 3s. It's a good thing. It's a steal for them. And they're great models as well. They're probably the best, most points efficient thing in the fast attack slot now, to be fair, apart from maybe Warp Talons. Actually, it is a toss-up between Warp Talons and Venom Crawlers. But uh, throw, throwing three Venom Crawlers forward at your opponent, just like Tyranid players throwing Carnifexes forward, is probably a good shout. It's cheap, it's easy, they're resilient, do it. Right, word bearers, feel a bit OP to me. I mean, just build a full assaulty army, throw yourself at your opponent, and you're re-rolling all the hits all the time. <laughs> the one I wanted to talk about, though, really wanted to talk about, is Empress Children. I like this one. This is uh, a nice trait. If you're new to playing Chaos Space Marines, but it's also a nice trait because it's actually very powerful. Flawless Perfection. Each time a model with this trait makes an attack, you can ignore any or all hit roll, weapon skill and ballistic skill modifiers. It basically means if you're playing with Empress Children, you're always hitting on threes. You advance with that assault weapon, you're hitting on threes. Move with that heavy weapon and shoot it through a tree, hitting on threes. You're a tank locked in close combat you're hitting on threes. In close combat, when you punch stuff, there's loads of things in 40k that are minuses to hit in close combat. You're going to ignore that. You're going to be hitting on threes. But the best thing about this is it says you can ignore any or all modifiers. So you can choose to ignore all the stuff that negatively affects you and then um, use all the stuff that positively affects you. So, hey, I'm minuses to hit you. So I'm going to turn off that rule. I'm going to choose to ignore that one. But I've put prescience on myself, so I'm actually plus one to hit you instead. So instead of hitting on four, suddenly you've gone down to hitting on twos. You can basically ignore all the bad stuff and then not ignore all the good stuff. That one rule played out across the course of five turns, played out across the course of a whole game, across your whole army. That one's going to add up an awful lot. Um, they also... Six is to wound, count as an additional AP. So that's their second part of the Empress Children Legion trait, which is nice. Six is to wound and additional AP all the time. Basically, that's the only rule that you'll need to re remember when you play Empress Children, because you're like, I'm always hitting you. My weapon skill, ballistic skill is always whatever it is. And six is to wound. Well, I'm an extra AP. That is going to, over the course of a game, in shooting and in close combat, it's going to be a good one. I'm not going to run through every single Legion in this review and every single Stratagem and Relic in this review. I'm sure that there's going to be many reviewers out there on YouTube that do break it down bit by bit by bit. 
so this video would turn into like a five hour video there are too many chocolates in this chocolate box if we did that and we stuffed ourselves completely everyone would feel a little bit sick by the end of it what i'm gonna do though for the first time ever is on monday i mean i'd like to do this on the saturday and the sunday and the, oh, i'd like to have done this on the saturday or the sunday but i'm filming on the saturday or the sunday so monday evening when i do my live stream i will sit down with this book and answer any questions that uh, you guys might have so if you turn up and say hey can red corsairs can they advance and charge still i'll say yes red corsairs can advance and charge still but why you'd ask me that question on monday when i've just answered that question is i don't know what am i talking about more things so the legion traits and rules provide you with different ways of modifying your army most of, most of them are close combat centered actually and then do care space marines still have malicious volleys which is their version of bolter discipline the answer to that is yes it applies to terminators bikers and infantry and the other question is do they still get death to the uh, false emperor and the answer is yes no sort of instead they have a rule called let the galaxy burn which is kind of like death to the false emperor but a bit better um, basically whenever they make a flamer attack the nice little cherry on the cake here is whenever they make hits with flame weapons they always add two to the result I like that. It's called Let the Galaxy Burn. I douse you with a flamer and it's D6 plus 2. I douse you with four flamers and that'd be D6 plus 8. Let the Galaxy Burn. But like I said, it's still, it's basically Death of the False Emperor. It's called Wanton Destruction, Wanton Massacre and Wanton Slaughter. And they kind of work like uh, Devastated Doctrine, Assault Doctrine and Tactical Doctrine from the Space Marine book. So Wanton Slaughter is Death of the False Emperor. Sixes in close combat explode but sixes explode in close combat now from turn three onwards thinking about it that means it's a little bit worse than death to the false emperor because in some cases some care space reinforces wanted to get in close combat in turn two and have sixes exploding in close combat in turn two but now they explode in turn three what you've got is sixes explode in shooting in turns one and two in turn one wanting destruction Heavy rapid fire grenade weapons explode in turn two. Wanton massacre, uh, rapid fire assault and pistol weapons explode. Basically, you're going to mainly see it on heavies in turn one and rapid fire in turn one and turn two, and also assault in turn two. And then in turn three onwards, uh, close combat. But it's like the Devastator tactical assault doctrine from the Space Marine book. In the Space Marine book, you can go Devastator, then tactical, tactical, then assault, assault. You don't have to change in turn three. And the same here, you can go destruction, massacre, massacre, slaughter, slaughter. You don't have to change in turn three to the close combat one if you don't want to. But because this book seems to lean strongly towards close combat, you probably do. Um, so yeah, wanton destruction, let the galaxy burn, death to the false emperor, six is exploding, close combat from turn three onwards is still a thing. But sixes also explode in shooting now before you get into close combat. So it's better than Death to the False Emperor. Plus you get the nice little two hits with the flamer thing as well. Not that everyone's going to be running around with flamers all of a sudden, but it's a, it's a nice little buff. Stratagems. I'm not going to go through all the stratagems, but there's a lot of good ones here. <laughs> there's a stratagems in the Space Marine book called Death to the Traitors for 1 CP. You can reroll all hits in close combat against Chaos Space Marines. Well, there's one here called Death of the False Emperor. For one CP, Chaos Space Marines can reroll all hits against Heretic, uh, against Adeptus Astartes or Sanctus Astartes units. Basically, in close combat, the good guys can reroll hits against the bad guys for one CP, or the bad guys can reroll the hits against the good guys for one CP from their respective codexes. Whoever you think the bad guys and the good guys are, I'll leave them up that up to you. Demon Forge is in here, but it isn't reroll hits and reroll wounds anymore. It's plus one to hit, plus one to wound. On demon engines like Mauler Fiends and uh, Venom Crawlers, Hatred Eternal only affects legionaries now, and that is shoot again or fight again for two CP. Um, probably not broken because it's only effect only affected legionaries. You know, Fury of the First, that Space Marine strat, so terminates get plus one to hit. Well, here it's called Wrath of the Chosen, plus one to hit, and you can put it on Terminators or Chosen. That one's quite nice. 
Veterans of the Long War 2 CP add one to the wound roll on traitorous Astartes infantry or bikers. And uh, obliterators are infantry, so plus one to wound on obliterators. Ooh, obliterators can shoot into close combat now, and their guns are better. It's minus one to hit when they shoot into close combat. Obliterators are 90 points a model, toughness five with five wounds now. What's not to love? Shooting into close combat and minus one to hit? I like it. And their guns, well, the anti-horde version, they've got three guns, basically. Warp Hell, Runa Salvo, Focused Malice. They're all 24-inch range, but Warp Hell is D6 plus 9 shots. So one obliterator is firing 10 to 15 shots at strength 5, minus 1, 1 damage. That's their horde killer, D6 plus 9. Ruinous Salvo, which is basically overcooked plasma, strength 7, minus 2, 2 damage, is D3 plus 2. And then Focused Malice is basically like a Laz Cannon, D3 shots, strength 9, minus 3, 4 damage. So they're firing many Assault Cannon shots, or many Plasma shots, or a better Laz Cannon shot. And it's D6 plus 9 times, D3 plus 3 times, or D3 times, for 90 points a model. Um, yeah, I would get four obliterators, two units of two, definitely, because beforehand they get tied up in combat and they were a bit crap as soon as they got tied up in combat. But now you can shoot into combat. Got extra wounds, extra for the same points. <laughs> There's quite a few stratagems basically ported over from the Space Marine book, like or spec scans or um, being able to move and shoot as though you remain stationary or being able to complete an action and shoot. They've all got different names though, like a unending destruction and relentless devastation. But all the good ones from the Space Marine book are basically here with different names. There is a strat called Tide of Traitors for 1 CP, but it's unlike the Tide of Traitors that existed before. Basically use this stratagem in your command phase. Select a cultist mob that is either within six inches of the battlefield edge or within six inches of your deployment zone. So, so long as they're on the edge of the board or in your deployment zone or within six inches of your deployment zone for one CP, you can put D3 plus three models back in and it doesn't cost reinforcement points. The Tyranid Codex has a similar one called Endless Swarm for the little bugs. And so Chaos Cultists are like an endless swarm for Chaos Space Marines, for one point as well, for your units of cultists camping on objectives. That one's actually quite nice. Basically, lots of stratagems, too, far too many stratagems to talk through, and lots of very good ones in here. Ways to give yourself pluses to hit or pluses to wound, or ways to help protect yourself um, with minuses damage coming in, minusing damage coming in, or minuses to hit coming back at you. Yes, there's actually quite a nice amount of rounded stratagems in here. Relics. Relics are quite nice as well. Um, they've introduced demon weapons. And a number of these relics are demon weapons. And what you've got to do if you ever want to fight with a demon weapon is you've got to roll 2d6 under your leadership. You roll 2d6 under your leadership, equal or under your leadership, you're absolutely fine. Go smashing away with your relic, right? So, brilliant. But say you roll over your leadership well... You can either not fight with that demon weapon. So every time you want to fight with your demon weapon, you've got to make a leadership test. Okay. I fail my leadership test, can't fight with that weapon. Okay. Or I can take D3 wounds, mortal wounds, and then I can fight with that demon weapon. How often is this going to kick in? How often are you going to forget to remember to roll your demon weapon? <laughs> How many times are you going to fail a leadership 9 or leadership 10 because it's equal or under on 2D6? Not often, but on that one occasion when it does kick in <laughs> and you have to take D3 mortal wounds on your Lord and he's only got two wounds left, it's going to be really annoying. What you could choose to do is not take any relics that are demon weapons <laughs> so you don't have to remember that rule at all. But one of them is called Oloko the Black, basically the black, okay? For Chaos Undivided models, and what you do is you pick a melee weapon that your Lord is equipped with, or your Warlord, your, the person who's got the relic, pick a weapon, they're equipped with that weapon, it's a demon weapon. Why would you do this? Because each time an attack is made with this demon weapon, if that attack successfully wounds the target, the, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. So if you do, like, 
seven or eight attacks with this demon weapon and you manage to get five wounds through, then that'd be five mortal wounds in addition to the normal damage. That's probably a good reason for taking a demon weapon. <laughs> you don't have to go with demon weapons though. You can pick the Blade of the Relentless, for example. Uh, this will replace a power sword and it's strength five minus four. 2 damage, and each time the bearer fights it can make an additional attack with this weapon and each time an attack is made with this weapon on an unmodified hit roll of 6 the target suffers 2 mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends so uh, 6 is explode as well, remember in close combat you get that 6 to hit in that explodes, that's 2 sixes, and that would be 4 mortal wounds you could pick that one instead of a demon weapon and not have to worry about your demon weapon trying to fight you and stop you hitting the target that you want to hit. There's other relics to make your warlord more resilient, add one to saving throws and four up and vulnerable saves, stuff like that. Ones to make them more psychic. Talisman of Burning Blood has changed. It's a six inch heroic intervention. I think it used to allow you to advance and charge. But six inch heroic interventions now and plus one to your attacks. And every time the bearer makes a melee attack that destroys an enemy unit, add one to their attacks characteristic. I think I preferred advance and charge. But again, I'm not going to go through all of these other than to say that there is a nice rounded selection of relics, just like there's a nice rounded selection of stratagems and all the rest of it. It's This book is a chocolate box. I want to finish off by talking about a couple of the unit options that I didn't talk about. So Abaddon the Despoiler is an absolute beefcake and he's good. He's leadership 11. Haven't seen that before. Leadership 11. Talking about things I haven't seen before. Land Raiders at um, 9, Toughness 9. And Predators in this book are Toughness 8. It used In the Space Marine book, uh, Vindicate is a Toughness 8 and Predators are Toughness 7. In this book, Predators and Vindicate is a Toughness 8. But yeah, Abaddon, an absolute beast cake did i say beast cake that works toughness six nine wounds to up save four up and vulnerable save can never be wounded on a one two so billy transhuman he reduces the damage of the first attack that comes into him to zero the first time in every single phase he can never be wounded more than three wounds in a phase just like the Catans do so he's resilient af he'll be staying around for a very long time and he hits like an absolute freight train that's Abaddon. The Noctilith Clown. You know in um, Crown, the Noctilith Clown. You know in all the books now that they've got that useless piece of terrain that no one brings? Well, in this book, there's a really good bit of terrain that you probably do want to bring because it's 100 points and it gives the whole army a 4-up and vulnerable save. I didn't explain that right. What I meant to say was <laughs> it gives anything in your army the Traitus, Traitorus Astartes keyword a 4-up and vulnerable save so long as they're in range of it. Um, so yeah, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work on just vehicles or it doesn't work on just troops or it doesn't just work on infantry or core units. It affects basically everything in your army with the Astartes keyword as a four up and vulnerable save. So if you're going, so if you set up on the table, um, and you end up going second, so long as everything is within six inches of the knock lift crown, you're going to have a four up and vulnerable save to all the shooting in coming at you. Now your opponent could shoot at the crown. It's toughness eight with 14 wounds. So they can, with a threat save, they can pump all their shots into it and kill it, which is great because they're not shooting at anything that can shoot back at them. And in turn one, the range of its four up in vulnerable save is six inches and then nine inches, then 12 inches, then 15 inches, then 18 inches. It will be dead by um, turn two or three of the game, but you could spend 200 points to get two of them one to the right, one to the left. Basically 100 points to mitigate against going second, giving you, uh, which gives your army a 4-up in vulnerable save, seems like something I would pay for. Now there are so many little things in this book that I could talk about because so many things have changed. Basically every single data slate, data sheet has changed. There are things that are not in this book that I could talk about, like Armour of Contempt. It isn't even mentioned in here, but Armour of Contempt is a thing. Add that on top of all the other buffs and changes that are in this book, Chaos Space Marines just got hench. But more than that, when considering all the variations and options, this is the best Chaos Space Marine codex since Chaos Space Marines 2.0. All the choices in here just make this book incredible, but it also makes it quite a hefty tone. Quite weighed down. Now I think they were conscious of that when they were designing this book. 
which is why we have accursed weapons or certain items of war gear all doing the same thing, regardless that the war gear item might be slightly different from the other bit of war gear item. You can tell that they've made somewhat of an effort to tone down some of the complexity in small places here or there, because ultimately this book is layered and there's lots of complexity to it. And also lots of different ways of building your army. So it's both its greatest strength and also a weakness. Ultimately, it'll come down to personal opinion, whether you want to have as many options as possible or whether you want to have your mind focused in specific directions here or there. I'll say this for it, though. It's certainly no chaos, uh, certainly no Codex Adeptus Mechanicus. You don't need a PhD to read this one. And the book doesn't feel like three codexes in one, like Codex Eldari. I mean, Craftworld Eldari fight completely differently or feel different to Harlequins on the battlefield. They feel completely different, as do Yanari. In here, they'll feel like, well, they'll feel different as well, to be fair. They will feel like different legions coming at you because you can modify all your units to lean more towards your legion's way of warfare, or not. So yeah, it's complex, but not stupid Eldar Admech complex. More complex along the lines of Tyranids, which was also a good book. I liked the Tyranids book. I liked this I liked this Chaos Space Marine book as well. The last couple of books that have come out from Games Workshop seem to be seem to be on it a bit more. I like it. Anyway, I'll shut up. I'll be online eight, nine o'clock on Monday to talk about this. If you're listening to this way in the future, well <laughs> there should also be a live stream up. Well I'll answer do some Q and A's on what's in this book and answer some questions that people have and and uh, I'll give it a good read again just before the stream, so I've got my head around it. But I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, sorry for banging on a bit long. I'll shut up now. Happy Wargaming. <laughs>